All right. Cool. Um, moving right along, Mark, you're up with AWS me. ECS Auto DevOps. All right, let me share here. Um, oops, don't want to do that. All right, can everybody see my slide or now? Looks good, Mark. Looks good? good? Okay, great. I want to notice that the picture over there is mid-April and that's snow, and it didn't go away till end, the second week of May. And I actually had to shovel in May. So that's, you know, there's a moral though somewhere. Okay. Where do you live, Mark? I live up in uh, Golden, but it's actually about 8,800 feet up. Oh, wow. Yeah, the views are unbelievable. Okay, so, I mean, that's a plus, I think. Okay, um, I'm just gonna go through this auto deploy to ECS. This is the first iteration, so be kind. I would not venture off with customers, but we do have the AWS Summit coming up June 17th, so GitLab magic may happen in the next 14 days. I don't know. Um, and you'll see why. A lot of moving parts here. So I'll go through what is ECS, AWS ECS, and we'll talk about how it works, what you need to know, and then the, a lot, an actual live demo. How's that? All in 10 minutes. Okay. Um, so this is AWS, um, you know, I guess we reply to Google. Google Kubernetes, 2015 it came out, so it's been around for a while, and integrates with everything AWS, and that's one of the cons. It's AWS only, closed source. Um, supposedly it's quick learning, ease of use. Wow, and that is not true, um, as you'll find out. So there's a lot of moving parts from cluster services, task definition, to EC2 instance, to container, to VPC, to ALB target group. We have to know all of that to put this together. Um, but it does work somewhat. All right, how does it work? So basically you create a task definition. This is this TD. And this task, task definition is going to get the resources. You add an EC2 instance. It'll spin one up for you if, if you want, or you can do your own. Then you add a container uh, to that. So you're going to have to have a container, a uh, Docker container you can provide. Then you create this cluster and this is where you take that EC2 instance with the task definition, and then you add the VPC and the subnets, right? Step two. And three, you create a service. This is kind of like the Kubernetes where it actually will, you know, keep on working to maintain whatever you define. So this is where it's for keeping the number of tasks and everything running. So this is where you configure the EC2 instance. This is where you have to define the ports and everything, and uh, you have to have an ALB. If you try to use a classic load balancer, uh, it's going to bounce you over to Fargate. So you're basically stuck with an ALB if you want to use EC2. All right. Then on our side, so now you flip over to GitLab to actually work with this. Once you set all this up, then you can go over here and you can start defining these variables, environment variables. The key one is this platform. We'll look at auto DevOps platform target. If you put ECS in this, this is where auto DevOps kick in. This is where you can use auto DevOps with this ECS. Uh, you'll notice you'll need this cluster that we define over here. You'll need the service that we define over here. And you'll need this task definition. Got it. And finally, there's a nice little video. I've been working with ITN, ITN uh, to figure this out. He's a main contact uh, to help make this a reality. Because there's some changes they'll have to do. It took us a while to get this going. Working with Cesar too in product marketing, which I think he's involved with this uh, auto AWS summit. Any questions or should we wait? None will go on. Okay, one, there, there is no framework yet. I think we're gonna have to, GitLab's gonna have to make that commitment. Uh, there is no review apps. If you wanna do that, it's all manually. So if you run this, it'll wipe out your ECS container you have in that service. So right now, um, I got the joy of working with uh, ATN is great to work with them, but we're just not, it's not mature enough yet. Um, if you have a Kubernetes instance and you, even though you set the target to ECS, it's still going to use Kubernetes. So I had to go get a separate instance, totally no Kubernetes to make, so I could work on this. So it'll override that. Um, and these are some key links. What's really helped was an external uh, blog that actually walked through how to set up an ECS cluster. Um, not for the faint of heart, but it will work. And we're, we're putting in all the 
documentation, hopefully, and uh, the team has really been great. Jason, uh, Aura, uh, it, it's been quite a bit. I mean, I think they realize it's, it's, it's way less mature than they need right now. Any questions before I look at it live? You guys good? Anybody run, run into this with a customer yet? Okay, I know I haven't. All right, so let's go to this project that I did have one here, but it never actually worked. So I worked with ATN to make this work. Um, everybody see this? So this is a, a Rails minimal app that he had to build from scratch. You'll notice there's no GitLab, you know, that's the YAML file. So we are using auto DevOps. And if you go down here and you look at the, what do you want to call it? The, um, ooh, I'm not logged in. Let me go back. Uh, let me see if I can hit this guy now. I can get to that. Where is he? Oh, shoot. Um, let me go to my Slack. Now I lost him. And pick up uh, this project. I should have had it queued up. We can do this. Okay, we've all been there. We know how, we know what, the, what it is. It's ugly, huh? All right, I'm here again. So we're back. I now have mine. Okay, now I can actually do something. So I wanted to show you the CICD because this is important, the, the settings here. And if we go into variables here, and these are the ones that we're talking about. So this is that ECS target. If you do not have this, you're not going to get the auto DevOps. You're going to have to have your own YAML file and do the includes. And then these guys are the connections to the service, the cluster definition. And within that, you got to be careful with the ports to make all this work. And we're documenting that we're in the process. And uh, ATN and their team are working on, working on that right now. Uh, so what will happen is that pipeline is not that pretty. So I have to work on this. But this is the pipeline that is using auto DevOps. So it spins up a build, auto detects that it's a Rails, and it creates this build, which is, you know, you would expect. And the only other thing we have now is just a review app that creates this app. And the big problem originally was that there was no way to get to this review app. The trying to get AWS and the VPCs and everything to line up, you know, exactly was not easy. But eventually we got that to work. So now you have this, and then it goes to a particular, right now he has it going to an environment which he hasn't set up yet. So he's got to change. The problem here is changing the auto DevOps. Um, you know, you just can't make changes to the auto DevOps include. And of course it's not working now, why not? Hey, that's, oh, let me try that. Ha, that's funny, uh, it's not working. So, so basically what'll happen is you change the thing, it'll fire it off. And I use my own uh, Google domain that we can push to in the, in the um, VPC and the test service, whatever it is to, to map it. So you can see it's not customer ready at all, but they are working on it. And I believe the AWS summit coming up will force them to uh, make a, a, an investment to make this happen. Wish it was better news, but that's where we're at. Just time check, Mark. Okay, I'm done. Okay. Yeah, Mark, is there an issue for this where we can follow uh, along with the docs being developed? Yeah, they're just setting that up between okay. ORF and, right. and ATN, which is great. And Jason, there, there's a lot of eyes on it right now. And Caesar, product marketing group. Thanks. I'll start sharing. Thank you so much, Mark. You got it.